Welcome back, Authenticate fans. This is what we're building today. It is a Spitfire Mark 1A flight stick with the iconic spade grip handle. Actually, this is just a spade grip handle, isn't it? The full flight stick looks more like that. That's the Mark 9 flight stick and the Mark 1A flight stick. Well, it's basically the same, just with this classic, great looking fire button. In fact, that fire button is the reason it's taken so long for me to come up with a Mark 1 version, evolving it from the Mark 9, because I just couldn't get that fire button feeling right. And uh, well, now I have, and oh, it's, it's great. I really like it. Now, the Mark 1A project has been developed as a very enjoyable collaboration with Aeroplane Heaven, who provided invaluable CAD reference materials and technical advice. And I know that Baz Bromley at Aeroplane Heaven was particularly pleased that I managed to include this fire and safe mode option via the rotating bezel. So in fire mode, you can press and unleash hell with your machine guns. And you can see a groove there for your thumb so you can press in nice and cleanly, or you can put it in safe mode and you're obstructed from doing that. So that works very nicely. Authenticate is a freeware project. We're creating flight controls for a wide range of aircraft with an initial focus on vintage warbirds, followed by vintage and classic general aviation. We're harnessing the power of 3D printing in conjunction with high quality but low cost components like hall sensors and sealed bearings. All flight controls can be assembled at your kitchen table with no workshop tools, no soldering and no metal work. You can source the parts yourself or third parties are providing kits of all the hardware as well as 3D printed parts. Now these flight controls are assembled from kits and this video is the assembly guide for this Mark 1A stick. As well as this kit, there are also the following kits in the Mark 1A series. There's the throttle quadrant and trim wheels for elevator and rudder. There's the flaps lever. And coming soon, we have the chassis or the gear lever. In the description below, I've shown a link to the Spitfire Mark 1A page on the Authenticate website, where you can download the assembly instructions as well as the parts list and all the files and all the information you need, and it's all free. If you want to build your own flight stick, you've got two options. There's the full DIY approach or the buy a kit approach. With the full DIY approach, you can download all the STL files and 3D print the parts yourself and self source the hardware. And this will cost you about 40 pounds. If you want to buy a kit, Authenticate doesn't sell anything, but we do have a fantastic scheme called the recommended selling price scheme or the helper mate scheme. Essentially, there are simmers around the world who've built Authenticate parts and are willing to print for you at prices that are much better, actually, than commercial 3D printing. So basically, wherever you are in the world, we can match you up with a fellow simmer who has built their own Authenticate controls and they've set up their printers just right for the best results. And they can print these parts for you at prices that are much cheaper than commercial printing. And in fact, they're better than commercial printing because they've calibrated them for printing authenticate parts. They follow a quality standard that I have set for them and they offer a warranty for their prints. And the scheme's administered by my friend Ruben at SimKit Supplies, who I recommend for the hardware kits. And this bit, folks, is the amazing bit. He does not take any profit on this. If you just put in a request at SimKit Supplies, he'll pass on your request directly to the simmer with a printer in your local area or as close as he can get, and you can deal direct. And Ruben will just stay in touch just to get your feedback and help keep the quality high. So that is the recommended selling price scheme. Now, one last thing before I start. The flight stick, as you've just seen, is very similar to the Spitfire Mark 9 flight stick that I built in an earlier video. The only difference being the fire button. The wiring is all the same. The body is all the same, just the fire button. Now, as the very first step in the Mark 9 video is to assemble the fire button before adding in the brake and the lower brackets and so on, I'm only going to cover in this video the assembly of this fire button. And then you can follow a link in the description that'll take you straight to the correct point in the Mark 9 video to continue with the rest of the build. So let's get started. We have some 3D printed parts as usual. We have a small number 
of components with some wire and a wiring diagram. And this is what we're focused on, the fire button. We have a black wire, a yellow wire, and we're going to thread the green wire. Just like we thread a green wire for the Canon in the Mark 9, we're going to thread that green wire, but we're not going to connect it at the moment. It's going to stay there for future use. I think there is potential to add an additional button at the back just for convenience, but at the moment it will be disconnected. So we'll get started. We can see from the wiring diagram that we need 60 centimeters of black cable and 90 each of the green and the yellow. And they thread through this hole here on the left hand side and just slide up the inside of the handle. And in a second, we should start seeing them appear at the top. And there they are. And the trick is just to fish them out where the screwdriver is best. So there's a yellow. In fact, if you grab the yellow and keep feeding through, it'll, it'll drag the others a little bit. Out comes the black, and out comes the green. So, all three wires. Now, pull plenty of that through. Now, at this point, I said we're not using the green. So, what we're going to do, in fact, is drag the green back. And then thread it because we could be using this later and just thread it back inside and out of the way. That's good enough. That's all we need for now, the yellow and the black. Let's get an equal length of that in fact, so that they, yeah, they come through an equal amount. Okay, we'll put the back of the fire button on now. So that goes this way. In fact, it'll only go one way, so don't worry about that. If it goes on okay, it's the right way. And that's a 10 mil screw that we need here. Should go in nice and securely. Then we have a front and it's kind of a smiley face. And that's the right way up in fact, a smiley face up. And we thread the yellow and the black through the middle, through the nose. I guess I would say. And then we have two M4 6mm screws and they hold down this front of the cover. Okay. Now we are building this new button. I have called this button a clinch button. Bit of an odd name. And the reason is that it uses this component. The component it took me about six months to find. It is called a self-clinching standoff and I think it's used with electronic circuit boards but it's just what we need here and that is what slides freely and nice and smoothly inside that hole in the body of this clinch button so that's going to be going through there and we're going to use a tacked switch as we've used before but it's slightly different to the previous ones this one is called a flat tacked switch. It doesn't have that little post on top. And that switch will sit here and slot into those two holes. It goes quite tightly. Now the way we're going to assemble this is that I'm going to connect these two wires to the two pins on the tack switch. And then over the top of that goes the button. So let's make the connection. Now let's get these wires lined up just right so, we, so that we don't end up with a twist in them. So if I lift off the tack switch now and then fold it over because it's going to go over like that and then down we can see that the black is going to be on the left and the yellow on the right. So let's make sure we don't put any twists in these wires and the process is just like we've done before. We will nip off a little bit of the silicon. In fact I'm going to nip off slightly more. I've refined the process a touch and um, I think it's going to be slightly easier. So we put it, we slip off some uh, some silicon and we slide on one of these ferrules. Yes, they can be a little tricky to deal with. The, the trick really is to have plenty of light. And then, this is the new bit I'm trying, fold over the wire 
so that the ferrule is sort of hooked on. Which is great because these things used to fly off all the time. So I have this folding over technique, I'm hopeful, will make life easier. Let's do the other one. Slide it on. And then fold over a little hook on, on the wire. Okay. So I have my ferrules slipped over the ends of the wires and a little hook applied so that the ferrules don't fly away. I have the body of this clinch button. Now I'm going to drop the clinch or the standoff into this body. Then I'm going to take my tacked switch with the bent ends. This is kind of the normal way that the pins and the legs of these tacked switches come, a little bit of bend. The bent ends at the side, which has got this little groove. And the flatter ends that I've, I've flattened them out actually. You have to squish them flat. They're on the other side and we're going to connect to the flat end. Now we just sit it like that, there's a little bit of an angle. And now we can slide on the black wire on the left. Okay, that's gone on great. And the yellow wire on the right. And that's gone on great as well. Now lower the legs and drop them in. And the wire should seat very neatly there. And now we can just lower this down onto the table and crush the legs with the ferrules. And we've got a little bit of stray wire. And as long as that stray wire doesn't go to, across the middle and touch, then it's fine. That seems really good. A bit of movement. I mustn't have crushed that properly. Right, no movement there. No movement there. Okay, that's on. Now, if I've done this right... Yes. Black on the left, yellow on the right. We don't have a twist. So now, let me bring this a little nearer for you. I'm going to lower this clinch button with the tack switch posts underneath and just drop those tack switch posts into the holes on this base and then press that down and that should go pretty flat without any not being kept up by anything and I might need to lift yeah I need to lift this switch up a little bit because it's creating some friction okay so I've pulled those black and yellow wires through uh, as I did it I, I found that I got a bit of a, a twist on the black and the yellow so I straightened that out because it's pretty tricky if you end up with some twists and excess wire at this point here. That has to be quite minimal, the amount of wire that is, is sort of sticking up there. And then when you've pulled it all the way through carefully, making sure that you haven't dragged out the crimps, then you should just end up with a small amount of wire that dr basically drops into that little cavity. That's what it's there for, just to keep it out of the way when we put the next piece on. So that is all looking great. Now this is the next bit, I call it the plinth, and it sits like that. So remember that there was a little bit of a groove at the top there, and that slots over just like that. And we use two types of screws here. At the top we have an M3 six millimeter, so that clamps the top down nicely. And then we have two very tiny screws. These are M2s and they're eight millimeter and they screw on at the bottom. Okay, that's in and we're very nearly there now. We have our spring, which sits like that. And then we have the fire button, the actual button itself. And there's a little recess at the top and the spring should sort of sit in there there you go, you can tell it's just sort of grabbed it. And then we have one more M3 screw. And that drops in there. And then what you have to do is with your screwdriver, press the screw until it just reaches the standoff. And then just start screwing it in. And it'll grab a bite at some point. Not yet. There we go. It's bitten in. And just keep 
screwing it in until you're there and it'll stop turning because the that hex bit on the other side has been prevented rotating uh, just be aware about that hex base actually um, it's possible that when you press this in if you were to give it a little bit of a twist then the hex see it hasn't properly returned the hex will sort of jam jam closed a bit um, it's only going to happen at this point because you're not pressing and twisting but at the point that you're assembling it you might find it hasn't properly opened so just there you go just release it now that should be a really smooth action if you press it dead center or even slightly at the side it should really run smoothly when you first assemble it it's possible that it isn't quite so smooth but with a few presses because it's quite a shiny piece of steel it'll just just wear a little bit in it'll it'll just start to run really quite smoothly and quite freely and that's a nice action with a good sort of couple of mils of travel and you can just feel that you've got about two mils of travel and then you just get that you hear it but that's the tack switch just engaging very nice now <laughs> this is possibly the smallest Ooh, lost it already this is possibly the smallest 3d printed part I've ever made this cap fits over the screw and there you go and it stays in place it sort of jams in in fact it's if you ever want to take it out you the best way I found to take it out is just put a bit of sellotape just sticky tape over the top and then the adhesive will just sort of pop it out but that stays in quite well and finally the bezel and it's just a press fit now when you first press it on it might take a little bit of force um, and also there you go and also it might be slightly stiff to turn um, but we'll just give it a few turns and some of the friction will go as the plastic sort of rubs itself a little bit smoother and you should end up with just a nice little turning action not too loose not too stiff and that my friends is a Mark 1A spade grip so folks that completes the fire button and I'm about to direct you to my earlier video where I assembled the brake lever and the body and so on but first just to make this a super slick and smooth transition I need to do just a couple of things because at the start point of the Mark 9 video I've already done two things one these bearings for the brake lever have been inserted so I'll just put those in now so you can see how that's done they're just a press fit that's one and then this other one that presses in two and this screwdriver holder is really useful actually it's a perfect fit to make sure that that presses in you want that firmly seated and if that's not firmly seated then you get slack and some problems so that's one thing second thing at the point where we start the mark 9 video i've already threaded the red blue and white wires to the brake lever through this hole so let's do that now here we go out they pop now you'll find in the mark 9 video that the point where I've threaded them through they are initially all dangling out like that and then you discover that these wires get slightly in the way of a step so so what we actually do is pull these back and then just have them in that little recess really and you'll finish pulling them out later in fact to be honest you can almost do this afterwards but to be consistent that's where we want to be and now I'll hand you over to the Mark 9 video to finish the assembly. So that's all for now folks but remember to subscribe if you want to know about my next video as soon as it's ready it should be the Spitfire chassis or gear lever but there's so much going on at the moment it could just as easily be a Spitfire radiator lever apart for the Mosquito fighter bomber or something like this for the Mustang P51D. Whatever it is, I can assure you that the Authenticate project is only just getting started here and we've got loads of great controls to bring you. Maybe it's time you put a 3D printer on your Christmas list. Bye for now, folks.